Hi, I'm Matt from HockeyReviews.ca, and here we have the Warrior Covert QR5 Pro Stick Snapshot Review. So unfortunately, this isn't my stick, so I can't get it onto the ice, and I can't test it out and do like a full review on it like I'm doing with some other sticks. But I can do a snapshot review on this because I shot it in my basement, just like you can use on their people's rapid shots and stuff like that at stores. So I tested that out for this, and so we're going to talk about it and kind of compare it to some of the other low kick sticks on the market to see how it compares to the competition as well. Unfortunately, I don't have the QRE 10 stick because I never bought that myself. So I can't compare this to that stick and see if there's any real upgrades here. And I used that stick so long ago that I can't remember the shooting and stuff. So I can't really compare these two that way, but we'll compare it to some of the features that first showed up on the QRE Edge. And then we'll compare it to the competition, the main competition I should say out there, which is the Hyperlite and the Trigger 6. Pro. So if you want to see me do more full reviews and not snapshot reviews of sticks and stuff like that, you can do a few things. Number one, buying any hockey equipment in Canada, check out the link in the description to Hockey Supremacy. Clicking that link and making a purchase gives me a kickback, helps with the channel so I can buy more stuff. Like the Trigger 6 Pro here and the FT5 Pro, which I bought through Hockey Supremacy because of people's help and by making purchases. Otherwise, support the channel, check out the links to Patreon, buy me a coffee, everything that goes through any of these links always comes back into the channel so I can keep making more content and talking about gear. Another thing to do if you want to see me review sticks like this and when they release their new alpha, reach out to the company on social media specifically. It has recently come to my attention that is very helpful. Things might go forward with that for a couple things in the near future because people specifically reach out to them on Instagram, Twitter, and through like their contact us page on their website. You're saying, hey, I want to see Matt from Hockey Reviews do a review of and then whatever product you want. And it would be greatly appreciated because that really gets me on people's radar. So first of all, let's talk naming convention for this stick because this is kind of a deviation from what we've had in the past and it's super confusing we talked about it when we did the glove snapshot review but we'll cover it here in case people don't watch that but you should warrior has had their covert line for a while they had it before the qrl it was the dt1 they had an lt and stuff like that and then qrl in my opinion kind of brought them to a new level it was a great stick but they also did a lot of things on this like the colorway so this is the very first time we saw like the light blue and the orange ideas through it and it was in the logo obviously as well and this did have their taper so you can see the skinnied out bottom right there and his taper is pretty unique thing for warrior at the time easton had their elliptical taper uh bauer had a taper that i think they ended up basically copying this taper originally it was really close but anyways this was a, an interesting design and pretty unique in this sense and it was kind of the starting of the QR thing that Warrior was going with. The one after the QRL, they changed the shape of this taper. So the taper still, as you can see, gets smaller here, but it now has edges to it. So you can see how it has like an interesting overall shape to it. So instead of just being a normal four-sided shape, which most shafts are, and Bauer now kind of gets away with that a little bit, you now see how you have one, two, three, four, five, six sides on this stick for an interesting shape. So they called this one the Edge, the Covert QR Edge. Back in the day, Warrior and their Covert lines or all their stick lines, the top end ones were just called QR whatever or Alpha, it started with QX and before that, I can't remember what it was, AX1 I think for Dynasty. Regardless, the top line didn't have exposed carbon through it. So you can see it's all just painted, right? There's no exposed carbon and then the exposed carbon was down here. Their QR Pro line, which was the step down from the top, and that would have been a cheaper stick with like different materials in it. So this one originally had like the Minimus Carbon 1000. I think the QR L Pro was like 800 or whatever. So it was like the one step down. That was exposed carbon all throughout the entire stick. Regardless, we get to the QR Edge and the name changes on it. Obviously it's no longer QRL, it's QR Edge. Uh, the other thing is you do have that exposed carbon throughout the whole thing. So you can see it in the blade and everything and you can see it all the way through the graphic and it looked really good. And you have that continuation of the blue and the orange look and I really loved how these sticks looked and this one looked excellent and they kept that look kind of at the bottom of the taper. Uh, like This was a kind of a reoccurring thing with the orange at the taper so I always really enjoyed that and thought that was a really nice touch. But, and this one was Minimus Carbon 1200. Warrior then went to the QRE 10, which unfortunately I do not have here but I'll link it up in the top over there if I remember to do so. And it still used the same name 
template and everything, right? It was a QRE10. So I guess you got rid of the edge part and it still had exposed carbon. They did do, I think a different weave on there. Regardless, we're skipping that one because we're not there. Had the same colors and everything. Now we get to the QR5 Pro and this is where the naming and everything kind of gets weird. Now, a bunch of companies now use Pro as a top line of sticks. Bauer used to do this where they had the 2S Pro, the 1N or 2N Pro. They would use the Pro as the top of all of their model lines. And then companies decided to kind of shift to it. CCM did it where CCM was like Trigger 3 and then it became a Trigger 4 Pro. One of those became Pro and CCM basically copied what Bauer did where Pro was always the top line where in the past companies like Warrior and CCM, the pro one was the step down. Now Bauer got away from that and they use special naming for all their top ones like Hyperlight, Flylight, stuff like that. Warrior went down that route too. The first one we saw it on was the LX Pro. Their alpha line was a QX, DX, and then LX Pro, copying that. So here we are, QR5 Pro. This is no longer the low line. This is, or the second price point. This is the top price point line in the, so it's confusing in that sense. The other super confusing thing is the QR5 was actually one of the worst sticks in the QRL line. So I think it was called like the QRL5. And then even here was like the QR, I think this was E5. But if you look up QR5, Warrior QR5, you see a bunch of videos of the QRL5 and that lower end stick. And it's really frustrating and annoying. And this naming convention is weird. We went from the QRE10 to the QR5. So yeah, Warrior did a few different things on here too in what they changed from previous and they've changed it on the alpha line before, but we're gonna talk about it here too. One, they have gotten away from their kind of famous 12K weave. So the weave on this stick, hopefully it's showing off there. You can see how tiny the weave is right there. I think that's a 12K, but they've changed it to this, which is the 25K weave on the blade right here. As you can see that bigger weave, all companies are basically using a weave kind of like this now. CCM's doing something even kind of crazier where basically each one of this is one weave and then it has like the, the square patterns as well. Style of weave in the blade, which is somewhat new for Warrior here. And we have also exposed carbon graphics all throughout. But the weird part about this stick and what you'll notice is you don't really see any weave anywhere. So the reason for it is this Minimus Carbon UD. So it looks kind of like an LD right there, but it's UD for unidirection. So instead of having a weave carbon, which is what is down here, this is all carbon strands lined in one way so it's not woven through each other like this it's just flat all the way through warrior says it gives them better durability and it allows for a lighter stick for like the same durability or something as the weave i have heard very conflicting reports on carbon fiber than what warrior is saying with the ud specifically i've heard that it's cheaper than woven carbon fiber and considerably cheaper than woven carbon fiber. And that's less durable than woven carbon fiber. From what I was told, weave design adds more strength basically across all of it because it's woven together. So you get the benefits of like that direction carbon and that direction at the same time. Whereas if it's just one way, you basically don't have this durability or strength, I guess what you're saying of in a certain direction. Warriors going with this for marketing. I don't have a way to test this. I don't. I'm not a structural engineer. I'm not a materials engineer. I don't have an engineering degree. So all I can talk about is what I've read up online. I'm not an expert at this. I'm just saying I've heard very conflicting things. But unfortunately, because this is a snapshot review, I can't really put this thing all through its tests as if I bought it because I don't get to bring it on the ice. But I haven't really had a ton of durability issues with sticks that use UD in the past. Like the Hopa one worked fine for me for quite a while. And I know some people had some issues with those sticks. I'd never had it personally, but I have seen UD and other sticks too. And again, I haven't heard of many issues from durability standpoint. So now that we got through all of that, let's talk about the other very important thing on this stick. And that is the graphics, which honestly, I absolutely love. And I think Warrior has done an awesome job here. They continue the orange and well, very minimal blue theme, as you can see. It used to have a lot more, now it's mostly just orange. And, which is kind of sad, but this stick looks awesome and you know it's definitely a warrior. The graphics here, as you can see, the graphics here on the text, as you can see, is very similar to what the QRL was up there, except blue instead of the orange look. And I do like how they kind of rounded this off right at the logo, which I think is a really cool look as well. I wish there was more blue, but I, it still looks nice. And I really love this part at the bottom of the taper that really kind of shows off the taper. You have these lines that kind of follow 
the taper path all the way through. And it does have that kind of chrome or stainless steel look, stainless steel look to it right there. And I really love how that looks all the way through. I think that's a very unique touch. And they keep doing that with this like edge piece and the taper and it looks really good on the stick. And overall, I really do like how this stick looks all through. It's simple and it's relatively clean compared to some of the designs that are coming out now, but it looks solid. I also love Warrior's touch of the little Warrior logo at the bottom, which is always a nice little touch as well. So one of the things I love about sticks is grip and it's something I always cover. And Warrior, I feel like has kind of fluctuated in this sense recently for stick grips. This one feels pretty good, but I wanna cover some things I think are pretty interesting on this. So Warrior for one of the alpha releases said that their sticks, that the actual like texture of the grip itself is now built into the graphic of the stick. So if you watch Pro Stock Hockey Sticks video on how grip is applied, pretty interesting, but basically it's a like a sticker that goes on and then they spray over it. And that's how you get the interesting 3D texture. So Warrior said that they added it to the actual graphic itself, which seems like it is still the case because you can kind of look at it right here where this orange is obviously the graphic and it has that texture to it. But when you go to right down here where there is no graphic and it's totally smooth. So I'm pretty sure that is still the case and it's a very interesting idea. And I, I like, I just overall like how this stick feels, especially for the grip and the texture. The other thing I find is interesting is the grip goes all the way down here, but it's not sprayed. So there you have that gloss grip up here, but down here is just matte. So it's not actually sprayed with the co grip coating. So it's not nearly as like grippy, but you can still feel the texture all through the graphics right there and you can kind of hopefully see it in the light so it kind of interesting that it goes all the way down but then it only really starts from about here up and you can definitely see where that changes right there right and when we put the standardized bauer pro stock glove on there to do the grip test i like it in my fingers a lot more than what i like it in the glove it's so minimal it's like so thin in terms of the actual texture itself that you can barely feel it through the palms this is a single layer nash palm all the way through so it's one of the like thinnest palms you can get and when i'm going back and forth i can honestly barely feel at all like it's only there if i'm really really thinking it you can hear it more than i can feel it i can't feel it really on my fingers unless i really squeeze and drag i can feel it if i'm just moving it normally like i would i don't really feel it that much on my fingers or anything whereas the new ccm sticks like the jetspeed ft5 pro has enough texture on there that you really notice it when your hand's moving this one not nearly as much you still notice it like right here and right here when you're sliding up, but it's nowhere near what a, like a more textured grip is. So I kind of wish this was more textured than it is. It's still nicer than what some other companies are offering in stock, like Bauer's really plain now, and it's still nice. And their grip, in my opinion, for Warrior stuff has lasted pretty well for a pretty decent long time. And unlike some companies like CCM's grips where it kind of peels and it chips pretty easy, I've used these two Warrior Six quite a bit and the grip on them has lasted pretty good for me and it's been like pretty consistent and it never really wore out that much. So hoping that's gonna be the case here and it does kind of feel like it's a very similar style of grip. So it should be pretty good in that regard. Now for weight of this stick, when we talk about this specifically, we kind of have to bring into the factors of cost now because sticks are kind of ranging a bit. All sticks recently have gone up in price. This stick is still expensive. It's $359 Canadian, but it's not the $400 that True's Hazardous PX. It's not the $400 that CCM's new sticks are, like the FT5 Pro is $400. It's also not the $389 that Bauer Sync is. Now, all of those sticks advertise to be lighter than this, except I think the FT5 Pro is about the same weight. Sync is supposed to be like 365 grams, I haven't seen one yet. And the True Hazardous is supposed to be like 365 or 360 as well. This isn't near that, it's 391. But I also have recently used a CCM FT5 Pro and that one came out to about 390 as well. So this stick really isn't pushing the barriers for lightweight, but it's fine and it's good. It's also not pushing the, the like price barriers either being pretty reasonable. Now with that said, again, CCM sticks also come in longer. So this is the piece that is cut off of the Trigger 6 Pro that we're gonna look at in a second. And this is has to be added to the length of the Warrior stick in order to get the true 
weight of everything basically this warrior stick is shorter than what not the new hyper light because hyper light hasn't gone there yet but new bower sticks are longer ccm sticks are longer sherwoods are longer so basically everything's longer but true and these now so you do have to add that to get the true like comparison before cutting anything down this is like a normal size stick and i think it so it ends up being like 59 if you measure from the heel to up here but it's fine and that's how i cut all my sticks too just so it's kind of consistent but the big thing about this stick is the balance on it and honestly it feels absolutely fantastic the trigger six pro here is i think technically lighter than what this is but this in your hand feels lighter but not too light this is basically the perfect example of why i think sticks are getting too light and it kind of doesn't really matter obviously i'm going to say innovate get as light as you can do whatever you want but this stick ends up being heavier on the scale and everything than some other ones and some crazier ones but the balance of this in your hands feels so good that it feels lighter in your hands compared to the competition and when using it and like testing it out this thing felt honestly better than my trigger six pro and i love that stick and this thing was just so good in that regards and i really really like the balance of it and how it all felt the balance point of it to make it kind of feel totally like even in your hands is basically right around here just at the bottom of where the grip is and that's just where my hand ends up naturally being and just it felt excellent in my hands and when i was doing a little test trying to pull the pucks in pull it out with one hand and just like stick handling around something i do end up doing a lot as playing defense pulling pucks away from people or pushing pucks from people this thing felt excellent and very well balanced and felt like it's really really good and warrior deserves a ton of credit for how great this feels in your hand for blade feel they're now using their fuel core ultra blade which according to warrior is the same traditional feel as their previous blades but now it has like a rib in it for added durability i don't know if it's for stiffness as well but it says they said added durability you can kind of see where that rib is at least i can see it in person hopefully it kind of comes off in camera but you can kind of see it going through there this stick is interesting because when i was using these st these warrior sticks which have that different style of blade they definitely feel totally different in my opinion than what this blade feels like hopefully you can hear that difference as well now obviously that's an older blade but i really do feel like this is kind of moving away from the what warrior blades kind of felt like and just it's something different i always liked in the past how warrior blades felt and i still kind of like them it's just they're different than what other things are this almost i don't want to say feels dead but it had a very unique feeling where it wasn't too pingy and it wasn't too soft it was kind of just in the middle but it wasn't like it wasn't dead but it was like almost dead feeling it's very unique and it's hard for me to describe and i'm sorry that doesn't make any sense but it's not dampened like a nexus stick but it's not pingy like a vapor stick it's just kind of in the middle but it's like neither both it's weird and this explanation is terrible so forgive me this stick definitely feels pingier than what that stick felt like but this stick basically ends up right in the middle of what the bauer hyperlite and what the trigger six pro sticks feel like now while most ccm blades are super pingy and this one is still pretty pingy overall this one is a more dampened of their line compared to the hyperlite it feels all really dampened because this thing is just it feels like a piece of plywood it's so pingy and i am not a huge fan of that puck feel whatsoever i like the ccms more i wish it was softer this one honestly feels right in the middle of the two it's still pingy still feels solid but it's not as pingy and like there's not as much vibrations that come through your hand that's come on the hyper light but it's not as soft as the ccm so it's a nice in the middle right there and i like it i think they did an excellent job of kind of bridging that gap and putting it in between two of the more popular sticks on the market and it gives you a nice option there now before we jump into shooting if you want to help support the channel so i keep doing more reviews and making more videos and doing like actual stick reviews and not just reviews like in my basement please check out the link in the description to pure hockey if you're in the united states clicking that link making purchase gives me a kickback helps support channel so i can make more content like this and do more videos otherwise check out patreon and buy me a coffee everything that goes through those links always comes back in channel so i can keep buying more gear and doing real reviews i don't get sent any of this stuff really so i have to buy it in order to make the real reviews and not just these snapshot reviews so all help would be greatly appreciated now on to shooting this is where the stick feels really solid it's not the best shooting stick i've ever used i still think ccm is on a level above everyone else i haven't used the nexus sync yet so i or the hazardous so i can't really put those on the table and like compare them but this stick 
but CCM has for the Trigger 6 Pro, I think that even the Trigger 4 Pro was really good. The FT5 Pro, FT3 Pro, I never use FT4 Pro. All those sticks shoot amazingly. While the jet speeds aren't low kicks, we're just looping them because the FT5 Pro is their newest release. But the Trigger 6 Pro is still honestly, I think the best shooting stick on the market or all of CCM's lines. And I absolutely love it. And I don't find anything shoots better than it. This is close. This is basically my second favorite low kick stick there is. And while I like the Hyperlite here for a few things, I like like your customization options, like the blade options on it in terms of height. This stick blows the Hyperlite out of the water and is way better in basically every way possible. I wish more people had a max height on this. They used to do W03 maxes. I wasn't able to find a W03 max anywhere. So this is just a W03. So I wish that was more of an option, but that's more just stores not ordering stuff in. But this stick overall is excellent shots felt crisp they felt really good they felt pretty consistent i was very happy with it i never felt like i was really leaving much on the table going to the trigger i definitely feel like the trigger shoots better and it does feel like it's harder it's easier and it's easier to release but covert was very close behind and it was an excellent feeling stick and it shot really well i have no complaints there and it was really good overall and it's cheaper than what the new CCM sticks will be like. Obviously there's a Trigger 7 Pro coming this year, which I obviously don't have, but this stick for the time being is an excellent option. And it's kind of disappointing how like not a ton of stores are stocking this. Like I looked at a bunch of retail stores in Canada and not a ton were stocking the Covert QRF 5 Pro, which is kind of disappointing. It is a very solid stick. It feels excellent in your hands. It shoots excellent. It's just not the top of the top, but it's good. And it doesn't cost the price as all those top of the tops kind of do. Now it's still that lower price. So it is a great thing there. Now I will be doing a Sherwood Wrecker RE1 review very shortly as well, which is another low kick stick. This just blows out of the water. Like the Wrecker is a good value for what it is, but this thing is just so much better than what that Wrecker is. The trigger definitely feels like it's top end shots and it's overall shooting is a bit easier to get off a good shot, but also just faster. This one doesn't feel quite as good as a kick as a trigger does, but the blade feel on this when shooting is so different than the trigger. The trigger is so much softer. This one, like you can feel it in your hands a lot more. It vibrates a lot more, which is fine. Just a different feel, but the trigger just feels so soft compared to this thing. So like this thing shoots pretty good, but the trigger just feels like it's a little bit better in shooting, but this thing is a totally different feel. So. It makes a ton of sense. Well, overall, Warrior has an excellent offering with this stick. It looks good. It feels very good. It has a nice place for blade damping, damping and pinginess compared to the other ones on the market. It shoots really well. Balance is excellent. The puck handling and feel and everything is excellent. And it's just a very good offering. And I kind of wish it got more praise for what it is because I really think Warrior has a very, very solid stick here. And from what I'm seeing, it's just not hitting people enough right now like it's not in enough stores it's not getting enough coverage people are always talking about the new bowers and the new ccms but this is a solid solid offering and warrior deserves a ton of credit for making a really solid stick here there is some changes compared to like the old lines and i can totally see pros sticking with that old blade feel and everything but this is an excellent feeling stick i would happily use this if i had to pick like a shooting stick and one that i had to pick right now off the shelf that i had to use for the rest of the year i still love my trigger 6 pro i still love my ft5 pro but this one is just right behind those and obviously i still love my geo for the puck feel but that's totally different thing this thing shoots way better than the geo balance is probably better than the geo as well so this thing is right up there and that's impressive for me and says a lot for me i think warrior has made great steps in this stick i can't remember enough from the qr10 to tell if the qr10 was like as good as this and this was more of just like a next graphic package of a qr10 ccm really was leaps and bounds of everywhere else and if i'm using this stick and i'm like yeah that shoots pretty good i'm pretty happy with that then that says a lot for that stick this is way better than the hyperlight and i know people want to rag on the hyperlight but it's super popular this one should be better and more people should be looking at this because this is a better stick overall and I hope people kind of jump into it for that. So thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully it was helpful. Let me know if you use the core QR5 Pro and what you think of it, or if you use the QRE10 and what you think of it going now that's been out for a couple of years. If you want to see me review any specific piece of gear, please let me know in the comments below. Also let that company know on social media. It's come to my attention that that's actually very helpful. If you let them know you want to see hockey reviews, do reviews on a specific product. Otherwise, if you want to support the channel so I can make more real reviews and get stuff like this stick on the ice and really test it out, please check out the links in the description if you're in Canada to Hockey Supremacy from the US to Pure Hockey. Clicking those links and making a purchase gives me a kickback. 
to help support the channel so I can make more content and do more videos. Otherwise, check out Patreon Buy Me Coffee. Again, everything through those links always comes back into the channel so I can make making more reviews and doing more videos. Thank you very much for watching and take it easy. You're watching hockeyreviews.ca.